around 2005, 2004, 2006, somewhere in that area, I used to modify amps, mostly for fun. I did put out some DIY stuff that would teach people how to turn like a Blues Junior into more of a, not a Blues Junior, but a, a, a Crate Blue Voodoo into more of like a marshall type of thing, I think. Uh, I did some Blues Junior mods, did some Pro Junior mods, just several different run-of-the-mill amps, less expensive amps that uh, you could modify and turn into something a little bit cooler. And that was mostly for fun. But over the past couple of years, eh, three or four years, I guess, I just never could find like that perfect pedal platform amp. Uh, there were several that I do like and still like, but they just weren't perfect. And so I set about kind of quietly in the background between doing pedal stuff. I set about creating like my perfect pedal platform amp. The thing that um, I could put anything, even a metal zone, into and it's going to sound really good. Uh, caveat with the metal zone thing. So you may remember a couple years ago we did actually put out I don't know, like four or five amps, just a handful, mostly for fun. Did it with Kevin Shaw of Shaw Audio, if you know that that guy, great guy. And it's more like a brown face deluxe. It's actually, this one right here. Let me show you. So see that amp right there? That one? Yeah, that's the only one left. But it was mostly for fun. We, I think, but we built uh, like four or five. I think Brad Paisley has one. Brent Mason may have one. Uh, one of the guys that works for me, Alex Clay, has one. That's one of them. I don't remember who the other one went to. But like I said, mostly for fun. But this is different. This is an actual part of our line. It's going to be in stores. So make sure you hit up your local store and ask them to uh, let you have a play on it. I think you'll love it. And I'll, I'll go into some details about it in just a minute, but I wanted to kind of explain why Wampler Pedals is coming out with an amplifier. I do have more designs coming as well, so stay tuned for that, and you'll hear more about that in the future. But let's take a, a look at this particular amp right now. So let's talk a little bit about this. This is a bright control. Normally on amps, what you'll find is basically an on and an off. And I don't like that because sometimes on is too much on. So I made it so it's it's very, um, I don't want to say dull, but it doesn't have a lot of brilliance, which is really good for some really bright guitars. And also if you have a really bright pedal, it takes a lot of that fizz out. So that's where we start at. So there we add a little bit more brightness and we add a little bit more brightness, a little bit more more and then pretty darn chimey right there pretty much a sweet spot in my opinion with this cabinet uh, this cabinet right here the su12 I would say that would probably be like a Les Paul setting or something a little bit darker maybe and then for like telecasters or strats I usually run it one of these two settings right there uh, like I said if it's if it's something that's that's really bright if you have really bright pickups for example, then you can start there. You can start there anyways. But um, yeah, that's that's like my magic spot. Just kind of the three or four right there in the middle. Um, if I'm using something really dark and I want something really chimey like a clean part, I'll crank that bright all the way up right there. Then, of course, we have the volume, which should be pretty self-explanatory. Bass, mids, and treble, which you're probably familiar with as well. Now, this switch here is the magic. So this is a fat switch. What this switch does, in this position, it's, um, let's call it stock, even though it's not really like a stock circuit, but that would be the starting point. So if you want more fatness, more beef, that's your control right there. Just click that up and you get tons of fat. Tons of fat. Now, a bit about the tubes. We have here the 12 AX7. That's your general preamp tubes. Two stages in it, two gain stages there. And then we have the phase invader, phase invader. It's like Darth Vader's cousin. The phase inverter tube, which is the 12 AT7. If you, uh, if it's too loud for you, because it is a 40 watt amp. Uh, if it's too loud for you, use a 12 AU7. Kind of calms down uh, the volume a little bit and might be a little more friendly to use at home. If you like a hotter amp, 
put a 12 AX7 in there and uh, it crunches right up. But with the AT7 or AU7, it's pretty darn clean most of the way up. 6L6 power tubes, 5 AR4 rectifier tube. It does do 4 ohm, 8 ohm, 16 ohms. It has an effects loop. Uh, it has a speaker out and also another cabinet out if you're running two cabinets. So I got the back on. This looks like with the back on. You can see the tubes. Got this nice little grill. This is not DIY friendly, so don't open it up because it will shock the crap out of you if you don't know what you're doing. So let me explain a little bit about this effects loop, though, because it's uh, it's a little bit different than what you would expect. Every ant builder kind of does things a little bit differently. Sometimes you find an effects loop and it's not buffered at all. It's basically just like you're cutting a signal and you put a jack in and another jack. And that's where you can run some effects if you want to. Other guys like to use two buffered effects loops. Other guys use like op amps or a different, all different types of stuff. So I started out thinking that I was going to do a two buffered effects loop. But um, in talking with Dave Friedman, Friedman Amps, you probably know who he is because he's a pretty brilliant guy. and makes some great amps as well. Um, and talking with him, I was, I was the problem I was having. It was just it was changing the tone too much. It was just it was it just wasn't transparent enough. And um, so he gave me permission to use his effects loop, his effects loop design, and uh, it's MOSFET based, but it's outstanding. So it's uh, it's just so transparent, so clean. And um, my thought behind it was, well, there's going to be some people that do want a tube buffered effects loop because They've been told all these years that it's best. But the truth is, when you're comparing them side by side, the MOSFET version just simply sounded better and it worked better with pedals. So since it is a pedal platform amp and I'm designing it to work with, basically for the guy that loves pedals, it's MOSFET. And that's fine because you're, it's so, so it's solid state going into solid state pedals. So the net benefit for you, the user, is that it's gonna be super transparent very low noise, and it's just overall better to use with pedals. Lower impedance, just a ton of different reasons I could give you. It's just a better way to do it. So that's why I chose to use Dave's design of the MOSFET effects loop. But before you comment below or send me an email or call me or whatever and say, Brian, Brian, that's, that's a dumb idea. Don't do that. Just please go to your local store, try the amp, and you try it and tell me what you think, because I guarantee you're going to love it. It's just outstanding. So with that said, let's jump into the a little bit of a demo type of thing. I'll run some pedals through it, tweak some knobs, we can see what it sounds like. Thank you. 
So thank you for watching and we'll see you in a couple days with a brand new video.